This is the Velatric Discover 2, one of the best full-size electric bicycles I've ever reviewed. The ride is smooth, the acceleration is quick, and the features are a miracle at this price point. Velatric has won a bunch of awards and is the fastest growing e-bike brand in the US. With over 10 million bikes in production, Velatric is everywhere. Why? Expertise, quality, safety. Velatric simply makes better electric bicycles. Velatrix's engineering team has experience from some of the biggest bicycle manufacturers including Lime, Giant, Specialized, and Decathlon. They own scores of patents including a proprietary drive system that no one else can touch. And Velatrix is safe. I have to be honest, I've seen the videos about e-bike fires in New York City. No worries with Velatrix. They spent the time and money to get UL certifications and ISO testing for safety. I mean, crazy tests, including subjecting their bikes to twice Sahara Desert heat, simulated sandstorms, and as low as Antarctic temperatures can get. Most other brands are not UL certified or TUV certified, but Velatric bikes are. Most electric bicycles are rated IPX4, meaning don't get caught in a bad rainstorm or you're in trouble. The Discover 2 e-bike is IPX6 rated and it's battery IPX7. Dudes have actually dumped the Discover 2 battery into a washing machine with soap and it came out perfect. Bikes get dirty, so don't be afraid to use a pressure washer to clean your Discover 2. Discover 2 has a bunch of other features including 12 points of comfort you can read about on the Velatric website. Adjustable 80 mm hydraulic suspension that takes brain rattling away. Hydraulic brakes that are smooth as butter. Kenda puncture resistant 27.5 by 2.4 inch tires. Comfortable riding for riders from 4.11 to 6.4 with an adjustable seat and handlebars. A low 15 inch step through, great for non-gymnasts or old people like me. Extended length left thumb throttle plus cruise control and a torque sensor instead of a cadence sensor. Torque sensors adjust the motor's assistance based on how hard you pedal, providing a more natural feel. There's a 750 watt, 1100 watt peak power motor with 75 newton meters of torque. You can adjust classes 1, 2, 3 with a top speed of 28, maybe a little faster. With a max range of up to 75 miles depending on how much you pedal. And a top rider weight of about 440 pounds. The Discover 2 can actually pull up to 880 pounds, which is insane. The display and app features Apple Find Mine, which is unheard of for e-bikes in this price category. It can synchronize with Apple Health, record and share your riding data, and you can adjust the bike settings in the app or on the display. If you don't like apps, you don't have to use it. You can do everything with the controller right here. There's also other little surprises like an industry-leading limited two-year warranty on the motor and electronics, 15 levels of pedal assist, and a rear brake light with a freaking turn signal, right? Plus a blinding 130 lux front headlight for those dark and wild nights. Discover 2 is available on or after March 29th, 2024 online and available at selected stores. Are you still here? Why aren't you online buying a Discover 2 right now? Hurry up before they're sold out. Use our affiliate link in the description to help support our channel and save an additional 60 bucks with our special discount code. Here's how easy it is to assemble the Discover 2. Watch and learn, young Padawan.
now you've had everything unpacked and unstrapped, it's time to put it together. But first, if you're like me, you want to ride it ASAP. So it doesn't say this in the manual or any video for any bike video, but I like to take the battery out and throw it. Oh, although you could do this because it's uh, got the right IPX rating, right? I like to charge up my battery. Sometimes they're sitting around at the factory for a while. This one had a pretty good charge on it, but you never know. I want to ride mine as soon as I put it together or at least test it, right? So I plug it in before I do anything, before I assemble anything on the bike. I'm going to plug it in and give it a good charge. You'll know it's charging because you see the red dot on the... Uh, on the uh, charger. It's nice. It's got a wall mount too, which is pretty cool. All right, you've got instructions. Now you can watch the video. Velatric does a nice job of giving you a nice installation video step by step. Or you could just use the book too. It's got all the same stuff in there. The order's a little bit different, but not materially different. You've got stickers on there if you need those for your local municipality. Some people are kind of sticklers about electric bikes, so if you need to label it, that's there and that's nice. And you've also got just about all the tools you're going to need to put this thing together as well. And a handy little carrying kit you can throw in your bike bag and take with you should you need to do any tightening or any repairs on the road. So that's nice as well. So let's start to put this guy together. All right, it says, let's put the front wheel on first. The kickstand's already there. And look at this. The tools have the numbers of the Allen wrenches on there. So that's pretty nice. Throw in the front wheel on first. This is your axle. This is the actual axle, so don't throw it away. A lot of other e-bikes come with spacers and these bars, these, these bolts that you just toss away, but this is the actual deal. It was a little tougher to unscrew than I thought, but uh, take that out and put that aside because you're gonna need that to put your front wheel on. And it's a pass-through bar too, which is nice. It's not the quick release. I understand quick release is convenient, but you've got more chance of a quick release falling off because it's not completely encapsulated by the frame like this is. So that's real nice. You need to know which way to go. Here's a little spacer in your front disc brakes. Just yank that out. You won't need that. You can discard that as well. And here is the way that the bolt's going to go in. The axle is going to go in from the if you're looking at the front of the bike, it's going to go from left to right. And you can see the threads are on the right side. So again, this is your actual axle. So you're going to pop that in there when you get your wheel on. Now, this is a little awkward to do it by yourself. If you have two people, it's a lot easier. If you have a bike stand, it's not bad as well. There's two protectors, on one on each side. I didn't see this the first time. I'm like, well, what's going on here? So I'm glad they protected it. It keeps it nice and straight. So you're going to make sure your disc is going to fit inside the caliper. And slide that in nicely. It's pretty easy to do this. The tough part is getting it to kind of stay there when you're going to push the axle through. And uh, it took me a little while to get this done. A little easier with two people. Again, with a bike stand, you could do that as well. Just push it in there and tighten that up. You want that to be super tight. It tells you the exact pressure they want on there, but uh, you can just uh, feel it out and tighten it up periodically and keep an eye on this. She's not going anywhere. There is the exact torque specification in the manual if you need that. Then you can adjust your brakes. You can do this now or you can do it later. The top and the bottom are going to kind of level them out to make sure they're straight. And then you can spin the front wheel and see if it's rubbing. So you see as you adjust those two, those two bolts, it kind of moves it around a little bit and straightens it out. So you want it to be kind of right there in the middle. And it takes a, a few turns to get that ready to go. Next up, your handlebars. Let's put that on there. And again, you've got all the Allen wrenches you need. This, uh, this extra bolt, and hang on to that. You're going to need that for the headlight. So take that out first. And then we're going to take the bracket off. And uh, this was a little tight as well to get this off. And it should be tight. And you're going to make sure you want to tighten that up pretty darn tight because uh, if you're going over bumps or curbs or rough terrain and it's not tight your handlebars are going to move and that could be uh that could freak people out and cause an accident so you don't want that to happen plus it's kind of uncomfortable as well so let's put that in there and you'll see they've got a nice little mark here your little centerpiece here where you can line it up perfectly some bikes don't have this which is really nice so you kind of line it up right about there in the middle and then tighten those four bolts pretty darn tight. Again, you want this super tight. And then you want to make sure your front wheel is aligned with your handlebars. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And there's two bolts on the neck here that you can loosen up 
and get that perfectly straight. Make sure you're looking at the tire and not the fender because sometimes the fender is a little off center and you really need those handlebars to line up with the front tire instead of the fender. So if you've already put the fender on and you're adjusting this, look at the tire instead. So find a nice straight, it doesn't have to be perfectly like a bazillion percent straight, but straight enough where you kind of eyeball and it looks like it's straight down the middle. Your riding will compensate for any differences there. And you want that to be nice and tight too, because again, if you're going over some rough terrain, that can get knocked out and that can cause an accident or some weirdness where you're steering one way and your bike's going a different way. So you'd never want that to happen. And it's a good idea to periodically check these bolts and tighten these up yeah, once a month or so. It doesn't hurt to go through all the bolts on the bike, especially if you ride a bunch. All right, now you can adjust the angle of the handlebars. Now this is really hard to get to. This nut underneath, this bolt underneath the handlebars here, took a little while to get in there and the Allen wrenches don't fit in there nice. You need a nice long one to get in there. And I finally got the seal to break and I was able to adjust this to the right height. I've got it all the way up there, but you can put it wherever it's comfortable. This is a nice add-on you don't usually see in bikes at this price level. So it's nice to have that adjustable handle the bar angle there. It's kind of cool. And here's your headlight. This thing is super bright. I mean, don't let it size fool you. This thing could practically be on a motorcycle and be street legal. So you're going to use that bolt you took off of your bracket and just attach that in there and you'll find the little clip to plug it into the battery's bike. Now we're going to put the display on. And these are, it's going to go right in the middle there, right over the center. It's kind of a little tricky to put on there. But you stretch those guys out and attach the two bolts and you are ready to go with a nice big bright beautiful display these are color coded so you're going to plug your greens in the greens the black in the black the red in the red orange and orange and look for the little arrows there's little arrows on the top of each of these cables and it'll show you how to line them up so you're not messing up any of the pins in here you really don't want to do that don't try to put them in backwards you can bend them and, and cause a problem so line them up arrow to arrow and you will be good to go everything should talk to each other and as long as you put the handlebars on right you should have plenty of slack to do that so we're going to do black to black and green to green and that's ready to go all right so i'm going to throw on my front fender i'm a little out of order so what's really nice about this is you can just hang it over that that, that bolt that's hanging out there which is pretty cool and then attach these two bolts to the front where you have two little bolts that come out there it's pretty obvious where these go you just take those out and then put them back in you're ready to go you got front fender protection now the pedals pretty easy to do and they've got nice stickers on the on the crankshaft which is nice and uh it just tells you which way to go i took the sticker off it was kind of a pain to take it off after i show you this one's going to go kind of uh counterclockwise on this side and tighten those up real well as well and put the right one on the right and you're ready to go all right, now that I've cleaned my battery, just kidding, I didn't really do this, but I could, right? Pretty cool. Snap that in there, she's all charged up by the time I had this together. Take the keys out and it is ready to go. You can charge the battery on the bike with this little handy little clip deal here. Or you can take it off, I usually take it inside. And we're gonna take the protective coating off. Here's the power button, it's kind of behind the controller. Takes a few seconds to find that. Pop it on and it is ready to go. Look at this. Now we're ready to do some pretty cool stuff. You can cycle through your pedal assist levels. Remember, there's 15 levels of pedal assist here for the three different modes, five each. And you've got turn signals on here. Actually, turn signals at this price level is insane. And they work pretty well and it's super bright as well. You also have a brake light attached to both brake levers. So that is really cool. Your M button here is your menu. That's gonna let you get into the menu stuff. Looking at our hydraulic brakes here. Very nice front and rear hydraulic brakes that work super smoothly and very, very nicely. I didn't have to do much adjustment at all. And you have your extended thumb throttle we talked about before. Your 750 watt, 1100 peak power motor with a lot of torque and your eight speed Shimano shifter. Did a test to make sure she fired up, it was ready to go. And let's set up the controller, this display. First I'm gonna turn my, you can adjust this, it goes up to 80 millimeters, which is really nice. Don't put more than 66 pounds on your back rack, although this thing can support a rider of 440 pounds. So let's set this guy up. I want to connect it to my app, but there's a lot of stuff you can do without the app. 
You, you can never connect this to an app and ride it normally and use all these on-screen controls. But I like to connect it to the app because uh, see what else it can do. And also, for the first time ever, you just search for the Vela Trick. And it's a free app. It's available for Apple and Android. Install it. And uh, you, I actually did a firmware update, which was crazy. So it scanned my serial number using the QR code. Knew exactly what I was. I could name it. I thought Fred was a good name for this bike. I don't know. I have a few names for him. Tells me my bike and how far I've ridden. The three modes you can change here automatically, which is really nice. It's kind of convenient to have that on your phone. I'm not going to lie. You can adjust your screen brightness as well. Your speed limit, you can change that and make that all the way up to a class three right here in the app. Your auto power off, light cruise control, throttle limit, and if you prefer kilometers, you can set that here too. And this, again, I've never been able to update firmware on a controller on a bike before, so this was eye-opening, which is really nice because sometimes mistakes are made when programming these things, and it's nice to have new features and updates so it's stable and you can continue to use this bike for years to come. So, and find my, with the Apple in infrastructure, the Apple ecosystem, you can actually hook this bike up to Apple's Find My and know where your bike is, as long as it has a battery charge. And uh, it'll keep track of the last place that it had it to. And this blew my mind that you could do this. So I can keep an eye on my bike, no matter where it is, if I lend it to somebody, if the kids wanna ride it, or if I just have a little too much uh, tequila and I need to know where my bike is, I can do it now as long as I didn't lose my phone. Now it's time to take it for a test drive. She's a beautiful red. It's almost like my Mazda red. Actually, I think it's nicer than the Mazda red. And she's all powered up and ready to go with my eight-speed shifter. Super comfortable to ride this thing. It just has front suspension, doesn't have rear suspension, but the tires take a lot of that out of the road. So I'm gonna fire this thing up and see how fast I can get it. And let's see what we can do. Start it out nicely, give it a little bit of pedal assist. Now we have these wide sidewalks here in Florida and everything's pretty flat where we live, we're on the coast. So you can ride golf carts or bikes in here. Oops, my fender wasn't installed, right? It was kind of rubbing. I heard this noise, it sounded like a, a Tesla engine it was really cool sounding but yeah that's not right so i just had to adjust that i'm going to go back and tighten this up later so yeah they had to poke in little holes here yeah mistakes are made right people make mistakes make sure it's not rubbing the tire and she was good to go and now let's continue and see if we can get this bad boy up to 28 miles an hour speed limit's 30 here so be careful and the police do patrol for stuff like that especially in school zones and we don't have any laws in Florida. You can ride like a class 12 if you want to. And look at this, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 88 miles an hour. I probably could have pushed it, but I ran out of sidewalk here. I probably, I'm thinking I could have got probably a little bit faster, but I didn't want to chance it. It was my first ride out here. And um, I'm not gonna tell you if I were able to do that. You have to buy one and try it yourself but you may or may not be able to get a little faster than I got there. I mean, it depends on your conditions. If you've got a tailwind or a headwind, how much you weigh, what your tire inflation is, how much you pedal. Well, not really how much you pedal, it was full throttle. Took it down the street and everybody's looking at me like, wow, that's a nice one. I see I have a lot of electric bikes that we test here. And uh, this one, uh, you got a lot of eyeballs. So it's a beautiful bike. It's a great ride. It's super fast. The torque is excellent. And I love the added accessories in the controller and the Find My and the turn signals on the back. So much bike for this price level. It just blew my mind that Velatric is able to do that with the Discover 2. Highly recommend it. Pick one up or at least test ride one. I think it'll blow your mind as well.